Makes the right sound. Picked one of these up at a car boot sale a couple of years ago. Used it once, then it broke. As a filmmaker, editor, and cameraman, my job is usually quite simple. Make something that isn't shit. But something I'm not really confident about is photography. So I set myself a one and a half hour street photography challenge to get as many interesting and unusual photos as I could in that short time. So I've got the Sony A7 III with the 35mm 2.8 on it. 35mm being a great focal length for street photography. I've made this challenge a little easier for myself by heading to Shoreditch in East London. I mean, Shoreditch is an amazingly photogenic part of the city. You only have to walk 20 steps before you see someone dressed in lycra, walking a poodle, or wearing glasses without any lenses. So it wasn't a surprise when I turned the corner and there was a guy walking down the street carrying a huge lamp. I racked up my shutter speed high so that I could capture him walking by without any blur of the image. I like this image. It's not too bad for a first shot. It's unusual, it's kind of quirky. I run around the corner and I see another potential photo opportunity. This ad campaign, I saw it says phone zombies. I thought it'd be really interesting if we waited patiently to see if a guy or two guys or girls would walk past on their phones. It just so happens these two guys went by. I love how symmetrical the frame is. They seem to sit perfectly under the billboard. Do we think they're strangers or friends walking under there? I cropped in this image because it draws attention to the single billboard rather than the noise of the other ones. I think I've been going for about 20 minutes or so. I come around the corner and I saw this sign on the wall. This lady was walking by, so I quickly snapped and caught the moment. I love the contrast between her and the message on the wall in this photo but it's kind of missing something. I might have broken every rule of street photography here in, in the first 20 minutes of this challenge. I photoshopped this guy in from another shot, but doesn't make it look so much more interesting. Now there's a stronger relationship between the people in the frame and the interesting message. What I love about walking around and doing street photography like this is you start to see things differently. You look up and you take your environment in a little bit more, looking for the humor, the irony, and the beauty in everyday life. Okay, so I was walking around for a while, but then I came across this tattoo parlor, and I thought because I cheated the last shot, I should probably be a bit more patient for this one. So I hung around for a while to see if anything interesting would happen. And I saw this guy getting his stomach tattooed. I think it's his stomach. I like this shot actually through the window. It frames the picture nicely. And interestingly, there's also a ton of frames in the back of the shot. It was totally unexpected, but I think because I was patient and hung around for a bit, I was able to wait to the perfect moment to capture a little bit of an emotional reaction from him. I think by the time I was at this picture, we've got about half an hour left. My GoPro, I think stopped working at the time. But I have to admit, this picture was a complete fluke. I was walking down the street and I saw this office. I pointed my camera through the window. It turns out it's quite an interesting image. The fact that all their faces are cropped. I call this the faceless corporate identity image. I thought this picture was crap when I first looked at it on my camera. So learning there is never delete photos on your camera whilst you're on a shoot. Here we are, I think this is the last 10 minutes of the challenge. Been running around like a madman. I was hoping to get one or two more shots on the way back to the tube. This Evening Standard seller looked quite interesting. The Evening Standard being one of the best free newspapers in London. Anyway, this image came out nicely. I like the shadows on the wall. That's what first caught my attention. And I also love the perspective of the newspapers in the foreground. There's so much luck in street photography, but it's a matter of patience and going out and having a camera to capture those moments. Street photography challenge over. So I want to share with you my five learnings from my first photography challenge. Learning number one, look for juxtaposition. For me, this is what makes photography unique. Try and juxtapose people and environments, looking for signs with interesting messages on them. Number two, Get close to your subject. 
I found a lot of my photos were taken a little bit too far away. They didn't have that intimacy that you often associate with the confidence of good street photography. So use a wide angle prime lens, which will discipline you and mean you can't rely on a zoom lens to get close. You have to build your confidence and walk closer to people. Number three, don't let anyone tell you you're not a photographer. Street photography is highly subjective. There is no right or wrong and there are no rules. The more photos you take, the better you'll get and you'll soon develop your style. Number four, tell a story in your images. When someone comes across your photo, will they move on and swipe past or will they take a minute or two to study your image? Number five, don't obsess over gear. The internet is filled with reviews on what camera to buy, which is the best lens. Ultimately, it doesn't matter when it comes to good photography. The best camera is the one you've got. Even your mobile phone is great because it doesn't mean you rely on a shallow depth of field or a zoom. It means you have to find and capture something very interesting with that wide field of view. Thank you to you guys who stuck around to the end of this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you were inspired to take more pictures and hopefully join me to become better photographers.